The world has one definition of success, God has another. Hello and welcome to this Monday edition of Destined for Victory with Pastor Paul Shepard, Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California. Today's message, Bearing Fruit That Remains, is coming right up. But first, Pastor Paul joins me from his studio in California. Well, Pastor, as we all learn to live differently in this COVID era that we're in and probably will be for some time and all the problems that persist with it, still there are opportunities for the gospel, aren't there? Absolutely. I'm of the opinion that God takes advantage of these opportunities to speak truth that he's been trying to communicate with us, but we haven't been listening And so I believe that while God may not have sent the pandemic as some sort of judgment, God certainly wants to use it. Uh, He will make sure that those who haven't been listening before have a new opportunity to hear him. That's the thing, all of us, we who are believers, we need to know that our job is to hear God for ourselves. Then we can communicate what he's saying to us to a world that desperately needs hope and help from above. I'm of the opinion that we should learn the lessons God wants to teach us while we're not living as we have grown accustomed to living. This is a great time. Since there's a shakeup in so many other ways, we need to allow it to shake us to a fresh sense of needing the Lord. And in this time, I'm praying like never before that God will speak in a fresh way in my life. In fact, I want to see opportunities for evangelism like I haven't seen in years past. I want to see more people come to faith. I want to see nominal believers deepen their relationship with Christ. And I believe that in days like this, we can actually grow and experience God in a fresh way. Thank you, Pastor Paul. You know, with all the chaos and uncertainty in our culture, many people are more open to the gospel of Jesus Christ than they may have been before. Listenership to Christian radio is on the rise, and that includes the Destined for Victory broadcast. Just one more reason why your prayers and financial support are so critical today. Now, we understand that many listening have been adversely affected by the events of the past several months, but we also realize that some have been uniquely blessed and could stand in the gap right now for those that can't give. If that's you, this would be a great time for you to be as generous as you can. And as you give today, we'd love to send you by request Pastor Paul Shepard's booklet, What's Love Got to Do With It? Love comes in many forms. There's love between friends, between parents and their children, or between husbands and wives. Each is a little different. But if executed God's way, they all share the universal aspects of perfect love, the kind of love God's Word describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's where Pastor Paul takes you in this outstanding booklet, reminding us that the love we have for one another, with God's help, is the kind of love that can bear all things, endure all things, conquer all things. Again, the booklet is titled, What's Love Got to Do With It? It's from Pastor Paul, and it's our gift to you today by request for your generous donation to Destined for Victory. Call 855-339-5500 or visit PastorPaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. You can also mail your gift to Destin for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Again, the address is Destin for Victory, Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. I want to make sure I'm successful by heaven's definition. Heaven's definition of success means that we have what Joshua 1 and 8 says. God said to Joshua, I want you to follow me, do exactly what I tell you. Take my word, don't turn from it to the left hand or to the right. He said, then I will make sure you have good success. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. If you want to have success as God defines it, then stay with us now for Pastor Paul Shepard's message, Bearing Fruit That Remains. John 15, beginning with verse 1, Jesus is speaking. Here's what he says. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. 
Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Uh, This is going to not be a typical kind of Pastor Paul series, not a lot of preaching per se in the classic sense. I think it's going to be quite instructive, and so I feel like I'll be more in teaching mode because I want you to understand the truths that Jesus shared in this, his last discourse before he left the earth and ascended back to the Father. If you want to see the last discourse of Christ, you want to look at John 14, 15, and 16. And that's where he gave us some parting truths before he ascended, before he was uh, crucified, then resurrected, and then after he showed himself in a 40-day period after his resurrection to be alive, he ascended back to the Father. Ten days after that, of course, was the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit that he promised during this discourse came and flooded the church with the power we would need to fulfill the Great Commission throughout the centuries. But this discourse, this final set of words from Christ are so important, and I want to especially lock in on what he says in the early part of John 15, where he declares... I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser because here he's going to talk to us about the quality of life that he expects his followers to live even in his absence. And so I love that he uses an agricultural metaphor to make the point, you know, truth runs parallel. I say that Uh, from time to time because you really want to grasp it. Truth runs parallel. When you see a truth in one realm, all you have to do is trace it and you can find corresponding truths in your spiritual life. And here he uses the metaphor of a grapevine. And he says, think about a grapevine. He says, I am the true vine. My father, God the father, is the vine dresser or the gardener or the vineyard owner. He owns the vineyard. I am the true vine and he's going to imply and tell us along the way and you are the branches. And he is letting us know that the key to our success, even when he leaves the earth, is going to be us being connected To the true vine. Because the life that we need is not our own. It has to come to us through him. So he says, I'm the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. I don't know about you, but I'm more motivated than ever to make sure that my life counts here on the earth. He was instructing us because he wanted us to be fruit bearing people in this world. Jesus did not come to establish a religion. Please know that Jesus didn't come to earth and say, well, what I'm going to do is start the world's greatest religion. Not at all. He came to link us to the father And he came to make sure that you and I had life, high quality life, because of our connectedness with the Father. And the way to get to the Father, he said in John 14 is, you got to go through me. I'm motivated more than ever to live a high quality, genuine life in Christ. I don't know about you, I want the real thing. I am about sick of phony Christians. I don't want to be phony. I don't want to fool with phony people. I want to have the goods. I want to have what Jesus said we are supposed to have. I don't want a fake imitation. I don't want a cheap facsimile. I want the real deal. 
I want the real thing. I, these days, I'm more interested in substance than style. Style is fine, but substance is essential. I want to let you know that we need to have spiritual substance. Spiritual style, going to church, having big Bibles, looking holy, saying praise the Lord. All that is style as far as I'm concerned. Some of y'all don't even say fine when somebody asks you, how are you? How you doing? You haven't said fine in 17 years. You <laughs> blessed and highly favored. All right, great. I'd rather be blessed because I'm living on the strength I'm drawing from the vine. I don't want just the trappings, just the language. I don't want just to praise the Lord and God bless you. I want the real thing. I want to be what Jesus said he was leaving us in the world to be. I want success, but I don't want it merely by the world standard. The world standard of success is get you a lot of money, get you a high paying career, whatever, and uh, make sure that you have the trappings, the house, the vehicle, all of that. The world says your success if you have certain trappings. I'm not interested in mere trappings. Now, I'm not against them. If you get a nice house, nice, nice car, nice wardrobe, fine. Uh, use it for God's glory. I want to make sure I'm successful by heaven's definition. Heaven's definition is different than cars and cribs and cash. Heaven's definition of success means that we have what Joshua 1 and 8 says. God said to Joshua, I want you to follow me, do exactly what I tell you. Take my word, don't turn from it to the left hand or to the right. He said, then I will make sure you have good success. I don't just want success by the world standard. I want good success. I want the kind God said I can have because I'm following him. I'm plugged in with him and doing his will. And so I want us to look at this passage saying, Lord, help me to understand how I can live a high quality, genuine life in Christ. And I want you to delve into this passage and take a real close look at it. Jesus says, I'm the true vine. My father's the vine dresser. First thing I want you to know, Jesus is the real deal. He's the real deal. Jesus is the real deal. He's not pretending he is the savior. He is the son of God. He is the life giver. Now, I know we live in days where being ecumenical is everything. I know we live in days where people want to get along. Let's blend all the religions. Let's blend everything together. Let's all come together in one big hodgepodge. No, I can't do that. I can love everybody because Jesus told me to love everybody. I don't judge anybody because Jesus didn't make me the judge. But while I can love you and while I will not judge you, I cannot let you blend your stuff in with Jesus. If you want to talk about Muhammad, if you want to talk about Confucius, if you want to talk about the other religious leaders that have lived over the centuries, you can have a discussion about them. Leave Jesus out of it. Because if we talk about Jesus, we got to start a whole new book. Because Jesus is the real deal. He said, I am the way, not one of the ways. He said, I am the truth, not part of the truth. He said, I am the life. And then he said something that really messes folks up. No man comes to the father, but by me. That's it. There y'all go. No, I ain't go anywhere. I just told you what he said. And he proved himself to be who he was because he's the only one who not only died, but who rose again. All the other great religious leaders died. You can go visit their tombstones. But Jesus rose again, showed himself alive for 40 days after his resurrection. And he is on his way back. I need to let you know he's not only been here and left, he's coming back. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So we got to learn to be ready to meet him. And we got to do all we can to take folk with us on our journey to heaven. The second half of Pastor Paul Shepard's message, Bearing Fruit That Remains, is coming your way next. Remember, you can listen to the broadcast on demand at pastorpaul.net. Again, that's pastorpaul.net. And there you'll find a host of great resources in our online store. 
When you drop by, be sure to share your prayer request with us by using the contact feature at the top of the homepage. And when you contact us, ask to receive Pastor Paul's monthly letter of encouragement, yours at no cost or obligation. Now let's join Pastor Paul for the rest of today's message, Bearing Fruit That Remains. When you look at what Jesus said and did, Jesus was either the real deal or he was the greatest phony that's ever walked the face of the earth. When people try to say, oh, well, our religion honors him as a prophet. He can't be a prophet. All the stuff he said, he's either the real deal or he's phony because he lied. If he's a prophet, he lied. He said, I am before Abraham was. I am. How are you going to say that about somebody who lived thousands of years ago? Jesus standing there talking about, well, before Abraham was, I am. That's not a prophet. That is somebody who's either God or he crazy. (laughs) Jesus is the most cray cray person you ever met. If you don't understand that he is the real deal. And I need you to know he's the true vine and you and I are called then to be connected with the true vine. And that means we are to bear genuine fruit. Genuine fruit. That's what I want to spend some time walking with you through this passage. If he's the real deal, you and I are supposed to bear genuine fruit. I got a basket of fruit here with me while I'm preaching this message. Anybody hungry? Anybody hungry? All right, here, come here, do me a favor. This young man right here. You distribute one piece to end it though. You getting your own. No, I need you before you, before you, you hold on to your own. You're going to get yours too. Walk, just walk in the up and down. Anybody who's hungry, just, just let them reach in and grab some fruit while I'm preaching this point. Anybody who's hungry, just, all right, I saw a hand back there. Just go back there. Oh, you got one right there. All right. I see a hand back there. Go back there. Right there. All right. All right, he hasn't even distributed three yet, and we already have one brother who grabbed one and said we have a problem. What is the problem, my brother? He said the problem is it's not real. It's not real. Go back, collect all my fruit. Because none of them can eat it. It's not edible because it's not real. It looks the part. It looks shiny. It looks colorful. But it is fake. I didn't buy that from the produce stand. I got that from a home supply store. One of those home goods or one of those kind of places Because what they sell is stuff for decoration. They sell stuff that is designed for you to stage a house you're trying to sell. And you put it out while folk come in to look around and you imagine this could be yours. You could have a table like this and you could have fruit like this. And you, there, it's staging. It is not there for you to consume. The world doesn't need any more phony Christians with fake fruit. Jesus said, don't sell me by being phony. Don't tell the world about a real savior while you are a phony follower. So I need you to understand. Jesus said, I am the true vine and I want to teach you how to bear real fruit. I can't represent a true vine being false fruit. So jot this down. Fruitful living is important to God. It's why he chose you. Fruitful living is important to God. It's why he chose you. Look right here in John 15 at a verse we didn't read at the beginning. Verse 16. Here's what you'll find. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Now, look at what he said there. He said, you didn't choose me. First of all, somebody's got to get that straight. You know, uh, I grew up hearing a song, one of the songs I heard sung. I decided to make Jesus my choice. I know what we mean when we sing songs like that, but let's just be technical for a moment. According to what Jesus just said, you didn't decide a thing. I know what you're talking about. You mean when the Lord invited you to be saved through a preacher or through reading something or however it is that you came to faith in Christ, you remember responding to the inner call of the Holy Spirit to be saved. That's what we call I decided, but Jesus just clarified you would have had nothing to decide if he hadn't first chosen you. When he sent his son, he chose you. You didn't choose him. I found the Lord and I'm so glad back in 1997, I found the Lord. You didn't find him in 97. He wasn't lost in 97. (laughs) Only way you find some is if they lost. Jesus wasn't lost in 97. He found you in 97. That's when he reached out to you and you saw your need for salvation. Yes, you did respond, but your response was as a result of his choosing you. And so I need you to understand something. It is important to God. It's why he chose you. He wants you to be fruitful. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And look at what he did. He said, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And he said, I don't want it to be the phony decorative kind. I want you to bear fruit that remains. So Jesus has commissioned us to live a high quality life. Being fruitful means high quality living and being fruitful while we having the character traits that are real while we live a high quality life. I hope you're interested in that. That's the only thing I'm interested in, especially in this season of my life. But all believers ought to be interested in the real thing. God wants you to live a high quality of life. I am about HQ living in this season. I want high quality. I don't want poor quality anything. I want high quality. Make it count. Make it good. And he has called us ordained that we should bear fruit and he wants it to be the kind that remains. So fruit comes in two ways, comes through our actions, our fruitful actions, but fruit also comes as a result of the works we do. So that's why you have scriptures like Matthew 12, 35, where Jesus said a good person out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. You and I were ordained, appointed, ordained, he just said, to do these kinds of things as we bear fruit. There ought to be a good treasure in your heart. If Jesus has come into your life and transformed you on the inside, the manifestation of that is he is making you a person who is going to do good. What should be in your heart is to do good. If you have a heart that wants to do evil, you need to get saved. I'm serious. If evil is in you, you need to go to the Lord and say, God, give me a clean heart. Thanks so much for joining us for today's message, Bearing Fruit That Remains. If you'd like more information about the Destined for Victory ministry or this month's special offer, be sure to stop by our website, pastorpaul.net. That's pastorpaul.net. Before you got here, God knew there were some things he wanted you to do. That's part of your job description on the planet. And you're supposed to do those good works. Don't leave here with your works undone. Don't leave here not having fulfilled your calling. That's next time when Pastor Paul Shepard shares his message, Bearing Fruit That Remains. Until then, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.